Hello and welcome to Pixie Studio. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this card using this little stamp set from um, Creative Expressions called Springtime Blooms um, and I'm also using uh, this Julie Hickey Designs Dinky Circle die set and also using this um, is All and Create stencil Oh, number one two five it's called lots of semicircles okay so we're going for kind of the circular theme okay so a couple of things to do we need to create our inky backgroundy bit which i'll do in a moment um but, and then we're going to die cut that but i'm going to just do a couple of bits of die cutting first um so this this purple piece um, this is my base card. What do I got? I've got five by five. So I've got this this piece of purple card, which is going to just make sure I've got it up the right way. Uh, that's the right one. No, I'm actually going to on the back. Oh no, just like that one. Hmm. I'm not convinced. I think we go that way. So I'm just going to just go. Turn that way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut out the this die. This the dies in this set have um do different things. These these two, the ones with kind of dots on them, they cut out like a, a mat. These two, they cut uh, a sort of frame, plus you get the the inner circle as a bonus. So I want to cut this out. It will be going back in, but we'll be putting yellow over the top. So we need um, we need that little bit to, to pop back in. Okay. So. And that. I also am going to cut uh, the white piece to stamp the sentiment on, and that's using that small central die. So it's going to cut me up the uh, mat and my plate. Come on. Okay. Let me just check it's cut. Well, yeah, well, that's cut because it's come out. Okay, and then that. So we need to keep hold of this part. And we need that. And take this out. We also need this. Okay, so this let's keep all the dies together for the moment. So this, remember I put my, my arrows on. This is going to sit on there and this bit we don't need but uh, is nice so don't get rid of it those to the side so now what i want to do oh, let's not forget this die now what i want to do is um create our, our inky background so i'm gonna um, map and I've already cut my piece of card to size, okay, um, lake seal, and new snake. So, ooh, so I've got two 
from the purple. So I've got Villainous Potion and Milled Lavender, and that we'll use in a minute. But for the actual background piece, we're using um, Squeezed Lemonade and Scattered Straw. Now, I'm kind of wondering this is really the bit that I want. Bear with me, I'm just having a slight rethink about what I'm doing. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ink a bigger bit so that I've got more wiggle room because I think I'm keeping myself a little bit of a job if I restrict myself to that tiny margin to water. Right, so I have scattered straw and I have squeezed lemonade. So I'm going with um, scattered straw to begin with. And um, move that out of the way. Just going to uh, apply it sort of wherever over majority of the card I do need to grab a little bit use this looks like I've glued this a million times I'm just gonna rip a piece off this is just for me to rest my fingers on while I'm inking so that I'm not getting the ink on my fingers but I'm also not contaminating the um the uh the bit of card with my fingerprint. Okay so you can see I've got the scatter straw on most of the card. So now I'm just gonna go in and fill in the gap. So I'm not worrying too much at the moment about blending because I'm going to do that with the scattered straw brush. We spread more scattered straw rather than the lemonade. Filling that bit in there. I do quite different yellows, but um, I've got like that. I've got quite an acidic yellow um, with the squeezed lemonade. And then you've got a much sort of warmer, mellower one with the scattered straw. So now I'm going back over all of it with the scattered straw. Um to blend it together. Now you might prefer or want the more sort of the brighter tone, and then you could so you could do the this this part with the, uh, the squeezed lemonade as opposed to the scattered straw. Okay, and we're just going to literally go over the top of this with the same um, same inks. You might think, oh, well, that's not going to show up, will it? Well, actually, it does quite well, really, because you've blended those out a fair bit. So I'm going to start with the scattered straw and I'm going to go. Through. You can see, you can see it. You might, you might kind of feel like putting the same, the same color over the top, and it won't show up. And there may well be certain places it won't show as well, but actually, you'd be quite surprised at how well this shows up. So at the moment, I'm just using the the scatter straw. I'm going to go in with them, um, the squeezed lemonade, in a moment. But we're going to cut this down anyway, so um, let's just get squeezed lemonade and we'll do the same, just find some maybe some bits that we haven't gone over with the uh, scattered straw. See there, that, that's standing out against that. So, what else? Are we going to there. It doesn't matter if we're going over the top of 
somewhere we've already been. Yeah, I think that will do. So put the lid back on these. Come back in the box with the brushes. Okay, and I'm going to give that a little blast with the um my heat gun. I like to warm up a little bit. And um I will clean my mat and uh later but for the moment I still need the mat because we're going to do, we need to cut this side but then we do need to do some stamping in fact probably stamp before we cut the side actually I think we need to do that but no I'm kind of like I keep changing my mind as to what I'm doing and there is a reason for that I don't really want all this stamping to be on this just little sort of distressy bit that we've done around the outside so I do need to cut it to size and do my die cutting before I do anything else. So I am just gonna move my um move that out there for the moment. We will need that again. So let's bring this one back in and which bit do I think this side or this side? Play around, I think that bit. So that's a bit weird. okay. So I'm just um, measuring this kind of by eye. And grab my trimmer and make sure that I butt that up properly before I cut. I'm not Still butted up. Okay. More fingers and thumb is not going to doing this very well, is it? No, actually. Okay. This really isn't as hard as I'm making it look. <laughs> Okay. So having a little bit of a woo. Right, so let's just check which way round this is going to sit. So like that. So I am again, I'm going to put a little arrow on the side. The reason I'm putting it on the sides is because we're going to cut through this. So I'm going to um no, I need to do it that way, didn't I? So we're going to put this on uh, again. I'm making this look harder than this. I'm just going to kind of place that on. That's that's where it's going to sit, and I'm going to hold on to it and turn it over. And then I'm going to whoops, not draw on that. I'm just going to do that. Okay, because what I want to do is to cut that aperture out like so. Okay, so. Have to go with that. Right, so we're going to cut that and I'm going to cut that first because I want, I then want to cut from the other side for the other bit. So let's do this first. Shouldn't need any shimmying because it's what we call a clinical shape. There's no kind of intricate parts to it. I don't need that. Ooh, my um, my plate is looking a little bit dirty there. Right, this is the bit we want. 
over. So let's try and get this on that way. That way, and that way. In theory, that should fit now over there. I'm not, I'm not too worried if it's not precise because then this is going back in. Okay, so that completes that. We'll stick that in a moment. We don't, we don't need that with no. That's a, that's a lie. We do need that. Because what we need to do now is we need this one on here because we're going to cut we're going to cut that out of this bit. And again, it's a simple shape, so it shouldn't need. Anything back. We're going to need this back because we're going to do some stamping. And also, we're going to do some stamping into there. Yeah, my um, my plates are a bit rubbery, which is why I'm getting all this. And because the ink is still a little damp, it will just attract all the all those little bits. So just be careful with that. Right. So we finished with the dye, so let's just pop them all back in the Ooh. We're gonna lose those. The bit we still need, that bit we don't need. Oh, let me do. Oh, uh, goodness me. Ran away a very important part there. We do need this bit. Right. Back out. And I'm just going to, uh, so inking mat, and I'm just going to put my stamping mat underneath. Um, I'm not worried that there's still ink on it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, right, so we are now going to do a bit of stamping. So I have Milled Lavender and Villainous Potion and I'm going to start off this piece and get the stamps out. I'm going to use this stamp here uh, and this little one. In fact, I'm going to move it up like that. So I'm going to start by stamping these flowers using milled lavender to turn the card, turn the stamp so that they don't end up looking too regular and sort of you know do multi-generational stamping so that you're getting different sort of levels of uh, inking Okay, right, and then we're going to go over with some of the villainous potion. Now, this is a really, really dark colour. So, if you're not sure, you're not wanting hugely dark, then just do the first stamp onto paper before you go on to your project. Because it is quite an intense purple, it's beautiful, but it is intense and again do um sort of multi-generation and if you're not sure what that means it means stamp with it more than once so i've already stamped once onto there that's second that's third fourth and each time you can see it gets slightly um uh slightly fainter which gives a really good kind of effect so everything's not all the same colour okay so that's the outer part done and so I'll put that to the side there now for the inner and I have to admit you know some I, I look at it now and I'm not sure 
whether it looks too distressed, but we're going to go with it. So I'm. You can always spray because these, if I show you, these are um, the distressing. It's water based. If I just spray, you can see the ink. It's another technique you can do. You spritz them with water, you can get a really nice um, watercolor type effect. That's uh, that one. Um, now, I think last time I used this one here, you can see to go around the edge, but I'm not going to this time. I'm going to use one of the smaller ones, is this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with the milled lavender. And I am literally just going around the edge with this one. I mean, the milled lavender is a really pale colour, but it gives just that little hint in the background. Um, it kind of gives it a feeling of layers. And again, stamp it several times. Okay. Well, I think I like that better than the, the one I did before. We always find that, don't we? That we kind of end up liking things all right so again i'm getting rid of that first stamp and then going around the edge yeah i think this gives it still gives it a distressed look but just not quite as grungy as the other one did so i'm stamping it off first i'm not worrying if i'm not getting a perfect perfect impression because that's kind of not what I'm going for so I am just I want to go around and fill in most of it so again just keep stamping the ink is there right so that's that and again I'm going to clean that with a little bit of water and my paper kitchen towel I have to say I'm not usually very good at cleaning my stamps with stuff. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, I can see the way up that I want it because of the way I used the, the stencil with semicircles. Um, and now I'm going to stamp this large kind of wreath. Now it's I like that they haven't. You can see. The, the stamp comes all the way out to here. Sometimes when you get these these kind of stamps, they go right up to the edge, and it does make them um, a little unstable, if you like. They'll they'll stretch. Now that may be what you want. I'm just going to make sure I take that off. Uh, that may be what you want, but by having the the stamp like that, it gives it more stability. Okay. So I'm going to now ink this, okay? And I do now want this to be um, quite dark. Now I am, I am going to just lock that ink that's in there because while it shouldn't stamp, knowing me, not using my um stamping platform I shall press down too hard and we should get ink where we don't want so I'm keeping it up that way that I can see with the semicircles and I'm just roughly fitting that in I'm just going round and putting my pressure mostly on the edge like so so that's nice and dark in comparison sorry i don't know why i'm over there the camera's there in, in comparison to the stamping around the edge all right let's move it out the way i am going to put in the bin i'm just going to now if i just i'll just grab a piece of paper i have put a lot of ink a lot of water on there but you can get 
that's way too much water but you can still use that use it for quite a nice film actually um but yeah so so clean your stamps like that you can if you don't put too much water on like i did you can get a, it's a it's fine mist rather than a, a kind of total rainstorm i put on there anyway so that's that clean you see as i pulled it off i, I pulled it and because it's got that those extra bits there it just keeps it stable um the last thing i need i'm just gonna give this a bit of a wipe it's just it's not a waste of ink but just for the sake of keeping things clean at the minute Off. So, um, I need this this bit. We're going to stamp the. Don't worry, be happy. In this block here, and again, I'm using the villainous potion. There is obviously it depends when you're watching this, but there uh, has. We're recording it. There is a new distress colour uh, due to be released. The last one was saltwater taffy. So um it'd be interesting to see. A lot of people are saying another yellow. Um I don't know. I, I personally still think there's not enough purple, there's just not enough variation in the purples, but that's just me. So we will see. We will see. I'm sure it will be beautiful, whatever it is. It always is. Okay. okay, don't worry, be happy. Um stamped beautifully. Again, I'm just going to spray that and clean it. Obviously, if you're using uh like a verse fine, verse clair, days on, then you need a uh solvent based cleaner water is not gonna cut it right let's just tidy up a little bit let's make sure all the stump are back on the sheet which they're not what did i do with them okay i will need to have a, uh, a search for those in a minute because they are undoubtedly somewhere oh look no that one is there they are there, look, just the way I put it on the sheet. They're all there. Oh, and if they were, put them back in there. Put them back in the pack then. It's a nice and space. I'm not going to worry, I've lost it again. Right. We can now uh, assemble our card. So, I. Remember, we've got a five by five card base. I've made this from um, Crafter's Companion, their multi purpose card. Um, I've got my purple. Oh, something must still be wet. I've got to have a little bit of water. I'm sure we will survive. Come on, Glue, you know you want to work. Gotta let it form. Okay, so we're putting. this one on and what's going on there whoops like so and we've got this it goes over the top and remember it might not might not be white lined up but as good as and we've got the little um this little one to hide that so i need my tweezers and my fine glue applicator just covered my finger with the <laughs> the pin in the lid okay so come on glue you want to come out there we go so i am just literally putting 
around the circle. To uh, make sure that we have that bit stuck all the way around. I'm not doing a particularly good job of it, but yeah, there we go. Right, so I've now got that in. So you just slot that in, and it then covers up. We need slight misalignment on that. Then this one goes in flat. Like so. In there. And then we need a bit of 3D glue job. Let's get these all sort of thing. It didn't dry that. This is going to go and I did when I first did it, I did try stamping it in there, but I felt it just needed something not just to physically lift it, but to, to visually lift it, which is why I ended up um stamping it on white to give that kind of contrast and to tie it in with the sort of these bits as well. Okay. And squish it as I do it. Okay, so there we have our uh, little Don't Worry Be Happy card. This is a lovely little uh, stamp set. You've also got Because You're Always There, perfect for a little kind of thank you card, you know, for those kind of friends that just you just know when you need something you know, without even asking. It's very pretty little flaws. They are all very silhouette -y. There's no There's no detail, um, but they are really rather nice. Okay. Have a look on the, on the channel. There's loads on there. That hopefully you'll be inspired by something. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.